हेलो फ्रेंड्स दिस इज डॉक्टर भोलाराम गुर्जर फ्रॉम आई आई टी रूपी वेलकम टू नेशनल प्रोग्राम फॉर कैपेसिटी डेवलपमेंट फॉर एयर क्वालिटी मॉनिटरिंग अलाइन विद द नेशनल स्किल्स क्वालिफिकेशन फ्रेमवर्क ऑफ इंडिया सो बेसिकली वी हैव यू नो टू सेशन द फर्स्ट सेशन इज ऑन एन ओवर व्यू ऑफ एमिशन इन्वेंट्री एंड सेकेंड वुड बी ऑन एयर पोल्यूशन कंट्रोल एंड मिटिगेशन so first of all let us uh, discuss about emission inventory and within this first session we will have 30 to 40 uh, minutes uh, this uh, lecture and then uh, we will uh, discuss so that uh, the queries doubts can be uh, clarified and uh, uh, you know you can ask uh, several questions and uh, that way uh, we will get to know about emission inventories different aspects in a detailed way so uh, these are the contents uh, we will uh, go through like uh, uh, role of emission inventory in air quality management what is the importance of emission inventory and what are different uses and how do we develop the emission inventory for uh, different sectors like transportation or industrial or agriculture or residential sector okay and then at last we will also have a small case study the hypothetical case study so that Uh, a visualization of emission inventory development activity can be achieved well so you can see uh, in overall uh, this uh, clean air accomplishment or air quality management uh, we have several uh, stages like uh, air quality monitoring we have to do then the question is emission inventory when we want to have emission inventory is needed before uh, you know air quality modeling because this is like a ammunition for any kind of weapon if you uh, uh, have very good weapon but you don't have good ammunition then that weapon is of no use so similarly if you have very sophisticated uh, you know air quality dispersion model or health risk assessment model but if your emission inventory is not good enough then your results will be erroneous they will be far away from the reality so the emission in inventory is very key feature of air quality management well so control strategies also to know which particular uh, sector is emitting in a uh, dominating way so that we can target that particular uh, sector or source uh, to reduce the air pollution uh, load so all those things all those information we get from the emission inventory and as you know emission inventory is nothing but the uh, from a source or from a given region it's a quantum of air pollution Uh, in terms of several air pollutants so how much pollution is coming out of a source or out of a, an activity out of a sector so it's a kind of you know like tons per day or kilogram per minute or per hour so kind of mass of the pollutant per unit of time generally uh, we we take it like that although you can also express it in different ways like how much emission is coming out of uh, you know per square kilometer or how much emission is coming out of uh, you know per unit uh, energy activity so that way you can uh, vary its unit depending upon what kind of purpose you are uh, going to achieve through that emission inventory well there are several sources of air pollution as you know like point source it may be from stack emissions from chimneys and uh, like power plants etc it can be area source also like let us say forest fire is there or in a large area if somebody is uh, you know burning uh, this agricultural waste etc then it can be an area source even like in industrial area if so many point sources are there you can uh, visualize it as an area source so area source is nothing but so many point sources you can see line source is nothing but several point sources in a line so uh, for example if there are several industries and their stacks are in a line at a particular bank uh, of a river or uh, some you know uh, this agriculture waste is being burnt at at the edges of the farm land or uh, you know this uh, transportation uh, this on highways if uh, some uh, vehicles are going on so on the highway that emission is also a kind of line source so depending upon the source we can develop the emission inventory for point source or area source or line source as well as depending upon the activity we can develop emission inventory like for domestic sector for power sector for transportation sector so uh, it depends upon again as i said 
what is the purpose what is the use for which you want these emissions uh, calculated okay so accordingly you can change and then what is the role of emission inventory in air quality management you can see in this particular uh, you know figure like uh, uh, when you want to go for uh, air quality management so in modeling you need quantities of emissions otherwise how will you calculate the concentration so you have to have these emission inventories and emission inventories like in gaussian dispersion model you can have a quantum a total quantity but in other models you can have in a grid fashion okay so you have to uh, first calculate total emissions then you have to distribute it among the that particular grid so that the model can read those values and you can uh, estimate the concentration well uh, utilization of emission inventory is several fold like if you want to have a planning of the policy for decision making so any kind of intervention for example in delhi cng was implemented so we want to know uh, how much effect is there in reduction of the particulate matter so uh, you can change the fuel and you can have this cng and then you can see what is the uh, effect on uh, those emissions which were coming before the cng similarly any kind of you know uh, these technological interventions you can uh, link upon development of pollution control strategies maybe uh, like uh, if you want to shift uh, from uh, private vehicle to public transportation system or some technology is going uh, on for reduction of uh, you know emissions then also that can be uh, seen with the emission inventory whether it is effective or not possible reduction measures or air quality modeling as i already said future projections you want to estimate what will happen after you know 20 years when some uh, policies are being implemented for example like if uh, 20% of the vehicles are shifted to a particular fuel or particular category like e vehicles are coming battery operated vehicles are coming so 20% of these fossil fuel based vehicles you take out from the road how much emissions will be reduced so those kind of things you can see so quantitative analysis of emissions and their effect on different policies or the impact of the policy you can always uh, see through the emission inventory well uh, so we have already uh, seen this quantitative like uh, it promotes the understanding of actual emissions also it can be helpful in raising the awareness in the uh, public uh, domain because you can easily show those figures that see if we change this particular policy this particular uh, program or technology this much emission is being reduced or this much emission is being increased so that visual effect is there okay and major sources can be identified because uh, when you have emissions for different sectors different sources so you can know which which is the dominating source you can target that source to have a good uh, you know reduction uh, uh, accomplishments and then priority emission reduction can be defined as per the emission uh, from different sources well modeling activity as i already have explained that for any kind of model you need uh, means air quality model or health risk assessment model emission is the key feature without emissions you cannot estimate the concentration or health effects future projections i already explained to you actually i will go little uh, you know quickly because uh, so many slides are there and we have limited time so uh, well we will provide you this uh, complete uh, this uh, presentation in pdf form so you can go through it at leisure uh, right now just uh, you know uh, please keep attention on what i am narrating the different examples uh, illustrations or that way you can try to see what is the uh, this emission inventory or uh, air pollution control and mitigation we will discuss so what is the focus of that particular activity and then you can relate with the theoretical knowledge then we can also discuss so uh, please don't mind if i am you know skipping uh, these slides very quickly well uh, as i said if you want to you know implement some uh, control or prevention measures or emission reduction measures so through emission inventory you can always know what is the effect of that any planning policy or uh, these uh, modeling as i said you want to use these emissions for chemical uh, you know simulation like you want to calculate secondary uh, you know aer aerosols or uh, secondary production of secondary pollutants so you need to know primary pollutants emissions and then in the grid form you can uh, with the help of other tools like uh, gis or uh, those kind of tools are there which you can uh, use for uh, developing grid based emission inventory 
and then you can use it for like work cam model or there are several kind of models which can be used for estimating uh, secondary uh, air pollutants well there are uh, two broader emission inventory techniques one is like bottom up approach which is quite detailed one where source specific data we need activity specific data we need for example if you want to develop emission inventory for transportation sector so we need to know how much vehicles are there different categories of the vehicles like two wheeler three wheeler four wheeler commercial vehicles or heavy vehicles all those as much information you can have you will get very good emission inventory means you should have detailed uh, those activity data and then emission factor point source non point source all those kind of you know activities you have to first list down and you estimate emissions for those particular activities based on the emission factors and that way uh, very less amount of consultant is there in that kind of emission inventory another approach is top down approach <clears throat> where less resources are needed uh, if you have like geographical region or sector based measurements uh, through like uh, ogc cameras or truck mounted cameras like drones or planes and satellites then you can you know convert those uh, uh, values in terms of uh, you know area specific or um, by scaling down through population or those kind of things so that's a kind of rough calculation and lot of uncertainty is there but for quick estimation plus also to capture uh, some unidentified sources this kind of uh, approach is also good otherwise for bottom up approach you know the activities for those activities you can estimate but if you don't know some activity then you will you will not have emission for that particular activity but in top down because you are catching I, through observations you are getting some concentration of some pollutants so that unknown pollutant will give you uh, the information that there is some source which is not uh, identified through this bottom up approach so that way these two approaches can be complementary also right so according to depending upon the time available resources available you can look into one or both approaches <clears throat> well so different pollutants we cater for emission inventory as many pollutants as you want depending upon again situation if you want to uh, let us say uh, develop emission inventory for uh, transportation sector or highways movement of the vehicles then better you focus on co nox emissions those kind of things otherwise you can estimate emissions for any kind of pollutants so there are several pollutants like toxic pollutants criteria pollutants acidifying pollutants like nox so2 etc heavy metals pops persistent organic uh, pollutants greenhouse gases depending upon the need you can develop emission inventory for that particular pollutant now this is very simple basic uh, you know formula uh, emission equals emission factor into activity data so activity data as i said how much fuel is being burnt in a power plant or how many kilometers are driven by a vehicle so how much fuel is being consumed those kind of activity data you should have and you should multiply it with the emission factor which is uh you know kind of average rate of emission of the pollutant per unit of activity data per unit of, per unit of activity data can be like per unit consumption of the fuel right or uh, per unit driven of the kilometer those kind of things you can play with when we talk about activity data it depends upon like transport vehicle category fuel type quantity of those fuels all these are activity data for crematorium you need to know like number of cases or special locations power plants what kind of technology is being used whether it is coal based power plant gas based power plant those kind of things you need all these are the activity data diesel generators you need fuel used for number of hours biomedical waste what is the quantity what kind of uh, you know bio biological waste uh, biomedical waste is there waste burning how much waste is being burned then uh, you know waste nature also how much organic material is present how much inorganic the metal is present in there so all means as much activity you can capture your emission inventory will be that much finer or uh, good i would say well emission factors as i said it is average value you can find it uh, through secondary uh, literature sources or you can have your own emission factors depending upon again the resources available resources and emission inventory can be uh, you know Uh, developed in terms of like uh, daily basis monthly basis annual average basis or seasonal emission inventories or forecast for future emissions again need based like gridded based or model inventories all those kind of inventories can be uh, uh, you know constructed 
well when we talk about annual average emission inventory this is one example you can see you know from 1990 to 2015 these annual emissions uh, were estimated for uh, of the greenhouse gases for united states so you can see for different economic sectors like transportation electric power industry agriculture commercial all these uh, values are there then they are summed up they are uh, you know aggregated or total so total sum you can see and for different years the values are different again because of uh, in a particular year there may be like more agricultural production or less agricultural production or less activities all those some technology may be new that technology may influence in uh, reducing the emissions all these things are captured that's why the variation is there yearly variation is there there is no constant emission okay so that way you can have annual average emission inventory when we talk about seasonal emission inventory then for different seasons you can estimate like for summer season you can see here the 70% okay in spring this is another value so in different seasons you know different activities are there some uh, you know dominating activities may be in a particular season like in summer uh, we are using uh, for a longer period like air conditioning for air conditioning that means we are uh, consuming more power so that way maybe the power supply from that uh, you know power plant so production of power may be more those kind of things may be reflected in these emission inventories okay and uh, in winter some pollutants may be of different nature because in winter people will burn lot of maybe biomass in countryside or in a particular pockets of uh, you know those uh, slums etc so you will find the signatory pollutants of uh, in that the particular season when we talk about like uh, future projections or forecasted so also like 2010 to 2030 you can uh, see the emissions whether it is reducing or increasing like nox emissions are increasing and uh, so2 emissions are decreasing for kolkata these are the uh, estimated emission pm10 are increasing but not as uh, steep as nox emissions and they are because of some reasons like so2 reduction is there because uh, reduced uh, coal consumption is being uh, forecasted then in nox emissions uh, because of you know whenever you have some activity uh, of efficient burning then nox emissions uh, generally increase basically you know in air lot of nitrogen is there and it's very difficult to control but you can control those emissions we will see in the second session how to control different emissions gridded emission inventory uh, you can through like maps you can have then you can combine them with the base map and the emission uh, calculated for different activities so this way you can you know develop for different uh, uh, you know whether uh, a country or for a particular region for a city you can have 2 by 2 km 10 by 2 10 km or uh, 20 by 20 km depending upon how much resolution you need a coarse resolution or fine resolution so that way depending upon the need you can have those kind of grid emission inventory it's a wonderful emission inventory framework which has been developed by central pollution control board i would uh, you know invite your attention to this particular you know flow chart this will give you uh, you know step by step of uh, you know quality checks and different uh, need of the data where these data can be taken like secondary data primary site survey data all those things so that way it will give you a good picture of how to develop this emission inventory so that is the framework uh, we should be using well now if you talk about major sectors of the emission inventory like transport sector industries agriculture or residential and commercial activities so accordingly we will see how to uh, you know estimate those emissions and why those emissions are uh, important like if you talk about transportation sector you know uh, then uh, there is uh, like around 25% of the total carbon dioxide emissions are coming from uh, transportation at the global scale so basically you can see lot of contribution in greenhouse gas is there right similarly for other pollutants like co emissions nox emissions and these are also the precursors of ozone so we have to be very careful about those emissions that's why transport sector emission inventory is so important then if you want to you know calculate emissions for the transport so we should know what are the sources of the emissions like exhaust emissions are there then non exhaust emissions may also be there like through uh, like uh, tire or through brake application and evaporative emissions from engine some leakage etc so those uh, you know sources we should know and we should uh, estimate emissions for all those sources so exhaust emissions if you talk then the carbon monoxide 
hydrocarbons or nitrogen oxide and carbon dioxide particulate matter all those pollutants we need to estimate so we need to have the emission factors for these particular pollutants for different category of the vehicle for two wheeler it will be different for petrol driven vehicle it will be different for uh, cng it will be different so all those emission factors we should know and those emission factors are developed in a very sophisticated laboratory it's very very it's very resource uh, intensive activity so uh, that's why you know uh, sometimes uh, many developing countries don't have their specific uh, emission factors so they generally borrow from similar kind of economic activities or uh, in a, from other countries well when we talk about uh, like evaporative emissions okay, they they are like vocs or hydrocarbons volatile organic uh, compounds non exhaust emissions like uh, you know from the road uh, resuspensions of the dust may be there pm10 pm2.5 all those kind of things may be there well uh, you know when we talk about like uh, detailed uh, activity data then we have to have uh, vehicle type fuel category as i said how many kilometers are driven by the uh, those particular vehicles so depending upon the model requirement you have to have those uh, activity data so emission model input values are there like vehicle population how much vehicles are there of different category in a city vehicle type vehicle age technology of the vehicle two stroke four stroke engine all those fuel type vehicle kilometer uh, travel temperature humidity altitude all these are there for correction factor basically the same vehicle if you are running in delhi if you are running in masuri the emissions will be different because of those uh, you know effects of the altitude humidity pressure etc and these are the output values which you can have like uh, vehicle emission inventory by the pollutants you can have uh, vehicle type contribution you can estimate efficiency of current policies you can infer from those data so those kind of uh, you know things are there well when we talk about uh, like uh, uh, different models so there are several models available for emission inventory development for the transportation sector like copper in uh, europe and then uh, this uh, moves are in usa iv is also international vehicle emission model in usa but all these you know uh, models basically are uh, developed in developed countries and they are very resource intensive and data intensive it needs lot of uh, data which in developing country generally we don't have so for us these models are not very useful okay although iv model was developed for developing countries and it was applied in pune uh, for a study but still uh, like we found that uh, you know we should have our own model and that way we developed our own model like wapi model the wipler air pollution inventory model so that was developed uh, you know during a phd thesis uh in uh, center for transportation systems or of iit rurki so that's online available and uh, you can access it you can develop emission inventory for any city by using this wabi model and this is uh, you know is not so much data intensive and it has been developed constructed as per indian needs or needs of the developing countries there are certain assumptions of course like uh, how many uh, growths of the vehicles are there then what will be the saturation value of the vehicles all those things are there and it can estimate emissions for exhaust uh, emissions like co hydrocarbons nox co2 particulate matter benzene vitadine uh, these formaldehyde total ph sltdehyde total ldh all those kind of uh, pollutants you can estimate then some non exhaust emissions can be also be estimated and this is core architecture of the wapi model so you need all these uh, you know values for calculation purpose and this is a kind of you know flow chart or uh, architecture you can say and uh, it will explain how this model really works well now we come to the industrial emissions okay so for industrial emissions again we need to have activity data like what kind of industry is there what kind of fuel it is burning right how much quantity of the fuel is being burned so all those things uh, we need to know uh, and uh, that way you know those uh, industrial emissions Uh, can help us uh, to know what is the uh, you know outdated technology because those emissions will be very high because of high emission factor if there is some lack of the policies uh, in the you know controlling those pollutions or if there is inefficient waste disposal because it might be being burnt or something like that if it is unplanned industrial growth or all these things can be captured by emission inventory to develop for a particular industrial area so all these things will figure out 
uh, when you go then there are certain models like uh, this markel uh, model is there or gains uh, the greenhouse gas and air pollution interaction synergies model uh, is developed by ya yasa uh, you know so all these models uh, similar models are also there we can also develop some spreadsheet model in a very simple way but uh, these available models can also be used for estimating uh, these industrial emissions although these models are kind of versatile and they have other features uh, like uh, i will tell you like this markel model can be used for so many things it can give you resource wise final energy requirements supply side technology deployment and it can estimate you know emissions for all these kind of uh, sectors like agriculture commercial in residential industrial transport everything so for industrial we can use for this uh, markel model framework basically and it can give you uh, nice estimations similarly gains uh, model greenhouse gas and air pollution inter uh, interactions and synergies model it can be used for estimating uh, these uh, industry related emissions and uh, different pollutants like sulfur dioxide or nox or vocs and uh, you know this particulate matter etc you can estimate by using this particular model and it can also help you to go for different scenarios because you can change values like some particular technology intervention is there then what will be the emission in that industrial uh, sector or area like in some clusters of the industry if some optimization kind of mode can also be used so several features are there which you can use so this is the website you can go through and then you have to first log in so you can you can register you can have your own uh, login data and it can provide you access and then you can uh, estimate many things by using this particular model it's a wonderful model i think you should try for it uh, whenever you have time well now if we come to agriculture sector so there are many emissions from agriculture activity also like from animal husbandry or agricultural practices or like uh, those kind of tractor etc which we use uh, during uh, plowing at uh, those activities and uh, then this uh, rice or paddy field so a uh, lot of uh, methane emissions may also be there so several kind of emissions may be there from agriculture activities including like n2o nitrous oxide which is also greenhouse gas and other emissions like methane also can be there ammonia can also be there from livestock farming manure management all these activities uh, you know release uh, certain kind of pollutants including fine particulate pollution like pm 2.5 because sometimes uh, agriculture residues are burned okay soil cultivation suspension re suspension of the soil all these activities add into and then fertilizer agricultural pesticides when we apply several you know aerosols and those pollution pollutions are there in the air right then uh, these greenhouse gases also lot of like methane nitrous oxide carbon dioxide all these come from agriculture sector so we need to estimate those uh, pollutants and greenhouse gas estimations you can see here like agriculture sector uh, you know representing uh, different uh, activities like rice cultivation or entering fermentation so co2 is maximum coming from entering fermentation so that way different activities will give different kind of uh, uh, these emissions of uh, different values of the emissions of co2 etc then uh, like uh, entry fermentation or farm operations as i said during uh, sowing or pesticide production transportation all these activities are linked with the agriculture sector so this is very simple equation you can see if you want to estimate emissions of the methane number of animals and their emission factor of the methane so you can multiply and you can get those values similarly for n2 you can go and get these values of the emissions of n2 and for co2 uh, you can have you know different typical equations you can use uh, depending upon how much uh, you know water being applied and uh, that way some rules are there these kind of empirical relationships can be used for estimating co2 uh, for uh, like tillage or sowing those activities then pesticide production and transportation how much it will add into co2 emissions from different activities so those kind of some rules are there you can use uh, these relationships and you can estimate co2 from the uh, these agriculture related activities open burning of agriculture residue you know this uh, in winter time uh, there are several uh, kind of issues are there particularly in the in northern part of india a lot of smog is there and uh, uh, you know like 
uh, you might be reading newspaper why delhi's air pollution um, uh, it is added into delhi's air pollution and air quality get deteriorated but it is the complete regional scale problem basically so all these issues are there for the agriculture residue burning and these are the you know simple relationships which we use for uh, estimating pollutants emissions for different kind of agricultural activities right then uh, when we uh, go for like different models so the different tools are there for agriculture emissions also like we have seen uh, trans for transportation sector for uh, industrial sector so for agriculture estimations agriculture related emissions estimations you can have these kind of tools which are the models which can help you to estimate emissions otherwise you can also go for spreadsheet model as i said it's not a big thing uh, to estimate emissions when you have activity data and emission factors well then we come to residential and commercial sector so in residential and commercial sector again which kind of fuel is bur being burned so accordingly different kind of pollutants we, we list and we estimate the emissions like in residential sector we need to know how much fuel is being burnt whether it is lpg whether it is uh, you know cow dung or the wood right so depend depending upon those fuel burning activities you have to have different kind of pollutants and these are the simple uh, relationships like uh, how much fuel is being burned and what is the emission factor of that particular pollutant related to that fuel burning activity so this uh, you know you can estimate the emissions for this particular uh, sector and uh, you can calculate uh, by integration because one activity you calculate for a pollutant then another activity for the same pollutant and then you sum up so integration kind of thing you have to do when you want to have the total emission estimation similarly for commercial sector uh, like for hotel or uh, like dg sets you are using when electricity supply is uh, disrupted so all those emissions come into commercial sector and again the same equation is there how much fuel is being burnt and what is the emission factor that you can use okay so we come to now this very simple case study to appreciate how emissions uh, uh, you know are estimated for different sectors so let us uh, you know assume one power plant is there different kind of two power plants are there and uh, they vary in terms of capacity and plant load factor and fossil fuel uh, used that is uh, like basically the coal you can say and then emission factors of that uh, uh, per kiloton of the coal is burned then how much no2 is emitted or so2 is being emitted or total suspended particulate matter tspr being estimated so uh these emission factors we will be used and for different uh, these activity data of the power plant a and power plant b we will be using okay the next uh, we will see the domestic emissions like population uh, and for residential for commercial sector rural okay per capita fuel consumption is given for cooking gas fuel wood or uh, you know dung cake and their emission factors for different pollutants are given so these activity data and emission factor we have so this is a bottom up approach basically we are using for estimating emissions for different sectors power plant residential domestic you can say and then the transport emissions you can see vehicle category how many two wheelers are there number are given so we can get these numbers from uh, you know this transportation department right rto uh, office and these vehicle kilometer travel data based on some survey uh, you can get from secondary uh, source okay number of cars buses three wheelers then emission factors are also given uh, because it is a simple example we have not given otherwise you also need to know how many vehicles will go every year because of their age how many new vehicles will come so all these things we have to incorporate right so the for power plant emissions we need the gross uh, generation we can use like power this plant load factor multiplied by the capacity so we can calculate gross generation then how much fuel will will be used for this gross generation so that is gross generation multiplied by fossil fuel used per gigawatt hour production of the electricity so those values we use then emission tons like fuel use in multiplied by the emission factor so you can get uh, for different activities these calculations are there which you can uh, you know see uh, whenever you have time and you will appreciate how simple it is to estimate emissions although this is you know you can have in excel sheet uh, those kind of calculations quickly you can do and uh, you can make it more complex also depending upon different technologies different activities 
for transportation sector you can have you know different numbers and their uh, this vehicle kilometer traveled so per day then per year uh, you can convert them and you can because we want to have an annual emission inventory so per year uh, you know gigagram uh, emissions we can calculate for no2 or so2 or psp type psp is total suspended particle it can be pm 2.5 pm 10 depending upon whether you have those emission factor for different activities similarly for domestic emissions you have the population you have the total fuel consumed and uh, you know these uh, emission factors are also there so fuel consumed multiplied by the emission factor you will get the emission of that particular pollutant so that way you can develop these emission inventories right and then total emission if you want to calculate so you can do total and you can see like psp's maximum uh, from uh, this power plants okay and so2 is also dominating from the power plant but uh, uh, vehicle category uh, emission sources are more for no2 basically okay and uh, some uh, second uh, like psp the second dominating source can be the vehicle or transportation sector so that way uh, for example if you want to control tsp then you have to control emissions from the power plant so this kind of uh, information can be derived from uh, these uh, activities based emission inventory development so in conclusion we can say that emission inventory is very important for uh, uh, you know being used for uh, these modeling efforts which we want to make for air quality dispersion modeling health risk assessment modeling or we want to see the effect of some policy etc so emission inventory we need to develop and for that we need to have the activity data and emission factor if we want to use the bottom up approach and that is uh, the resource intensive approach but that is much reliable approach basically and you can go for uh, using different models for uh, like uh, markel gains for industries uh, transportation uh, warping model you can use and for uh, you know domestic uh, and uh, commercial activities you can use another model there are several kind of models or you can develop your own uh, these excel based or spreadsheet models uh, if you know those simple calculations based on empirical relationships so that's very simple thing in in that way so this is overall uh, scenario of emission inventory and these are the references if you want to know more in detail about uh, emission inventory development so these are the references you can go through and you can get more information thank you very much for your kind attention thanks a lot